Breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, breaking news, and that is that the September 23rd constellation is more sure, more bona fide, more this is the real deal than ever before because Israel is mocking it. Hi everybody, this is Martin Zunder. Welcome to yet another edition of the Revelation series. I am looking into the seven ecclesias of Revelation, where they will be, where they will be staged, where they will be prepared for the tribulation. In the meantime, look at this from Israel Today, the website, israeltoday.co.il. The headline is, Say Hello and Goodbye to September 23rd. I love it. This from the people who stuff prayer requests into a remnant of a Roman barracks. That's right, the Wailing Wall is a remnant of the Roman barracks, not of the temple, because the temple was destroyed according to Jesus' words. Well, why would they believe Jesus' words? That no stone would be left upon another. The temple was destroyed. That's a remnant of the barracks. That's right, Titus's barracks. Isn't that fantastic? This article is by somebody named Savi. I don't even know how you pronounce a word with three consonants and one vowel at the end, T-S-V-I, Sedan, a Jewish guy. He's talking about the September 23rd constellation fulfilling the Romans chapter 12 prophecy of John. I'm not going to bother you with the entire article. It's basically reviewing everything we've talked about here. And it's the last line that you need to see. It's the last line that I will read to you. Judging by similar predictions, this is a quote by the guy with three consonants and one vowel who is a Jew, but judging by similar predictions in the past by both Christians and Jews, the year 2017 is just as likely as not to come and go in relative peace. There you go. Israel is poo-pooing, at least this Israelite speaking in Israel today. And so it's a sure thing. This is the best evidence I've ever seen for the veracity of the September 23rd constellation. Oh, speaking of peace and security, did you know this, that September 21st, that's right, two days before the September 23rd constellation, two days by my count, 21, 22, 23, yes, it's the UN Day of Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't make this up. And here is the theme of the United Nations Day of Peace, which is September 21st, 2017. I quote, the theme is, Together for peace, respect, safety, and dignity for all. Peace, respect, safety, and dignity for all. They're using peace and safety in the theme. That's a direct quote from the United Nations. I remind you of 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. Now, whenever they may be saying, okay, the concordant has for safety, security. Which I'm fine with that. The UN has a security council also. Now, whenever they may be saying peace and security, then extermination is standing by them unawares, even as a pang over the pregnant. Is this dovetailing or what? We've been talking about false peace we've been talking about especially though this birth pang this analogy brought up by our lord and now repeated by our apostle of a woman in labor and what is the september 23rd sign except a woman in labor micah chapter 5 revelation chapter 12 giving birth virgo is the virgin and jupiter is in her womb all this is about deliverance the earth is going to deliver a 1000 year kingdom but it has to go through birth pangs first and so this reference in first thessalonians 5 3 is incredibly apropos especially in light of the un the united nations day of peace on September 21st, the theme being, and I quote, together for peace, respect, safety, and dignity for all. Together. Isn't that nice? At the Tower of Babel, many moons ago, they tried to get together, but God scrambled their languages. 
a guy asked for a bucket of mortar, and where before, when he said, may I have a bucket of mortar, please, the guy helping him, the mortar getter, understood him. But on this particular day, when he said, bring me a bucket of mortar, please, it sounded to the mortar getter like, and he didn't understand him. Nobody else understood him. Everybody had a different language. Their little project went to smash at that point. But now we're seeing the reverse thing happening. God is now taking away roadblocks to peace, respect, safety, dignity together. He's taking away the roadblocks. It's the Tower of Babel in reverse. It's coming together. And guess where it will come together? In Babylon. Now, whenever they may be saying peace, security, and that's exactly what they're saying, then extermination is standing by them. This is what I'm saying. This is what I've been saying. September 23rd marks the beginning of extermination standing by. It's not the beginning of the extermination. Look at Paul's exact wording here in 1 Thessalonians 5.3. Extermination will be standing by them unawares. And they're going to be completely unaware because while extermination is standing by in the wings waiting to come on stage, it, all is very happy on the stage. It reminds me of the Lincoln assassination at Ford's Theater. There was a play on the stage and everybody was very happy. It was a comedy, Our American Cousin. What a contrast to the coming drama. Laura Keene was the star of that play. And in fact, John Wilkes Booth was a well-known actor of the day and he had starred in this very play, Our American Cousin, and he knew the entire dialogue. He knew the script. And so he waited until there was one actor on the stage alone. And it was at that moment that he broke into the president's booth. Well, he didn't have to break into it. He had doctored the door ahead of time and shot the president. In fact, there were two actors on the stage in this particular scene. And um, the last line of the play was one actor stormed off and the other actor, it was an actress, I think, or maybe it was an actor left uh, alone. Don't know the manners of polite society, eh? Well, I guess I know enough to turn you inside out, old gal, you sock old man trap. That was the last line before, boom, Lincoln. But it was waiting in the wings. People at first thought it was part of the play. It took them so unawares that they were clapping and laughing. Oh, isn't this a nice little addition to our American cousin starring Laura Keene. No, it's the assassination of a president. Likewise, likewise, the UN is on stage. The world is a stage and it's going to be business as usual. There will be applause. There will be laughter. There will be wonderful times, but disaster waits in the wings. And not just that, not just that, but even as a pang over the pregnant. So extermination, strong word, most pe a third of the earth will be exterminated. A third of the people on the earth will be exterminated. Not only is extermination standing by them unawares, but when the extermination begins, it will be as a pang on the pregnant. That is, it's another beginning of another stage where we have an increase in pangs. I told you before, the contractions, five minutes apart, now four, now three, now two, now one minute apart. And so this, thing's, this thing will come in stages, but it will come rapidly, in stages rapidly. I remind you of Micah chapter 5, verse 3. Therefore he will give them up until the time that she which travaileth has brought forth, then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. Speaking of returning to the children of Israel. How will the seven ecclesias in Turkey be settled? How will that begin, do you think? Well, I want to take you to another article here. Let me uh, find this. Orthodox Jews are now persecuting Messianic Jews in Israel. I don't know if you're aware of that. This is also from Israel Today. Israeltoday.co.il. They are some Israelites, some hardcore hardliners, old school, orthodox. They're sacrificing right now. They're doing it as near as they can to the Temple Mount. And they think, of course, that the Temple Mount is where the site of the old temple was, but of course it's not. It's the site of the Roman barracks. The whole Temple Mount area was 
Titus's barracks. It was the barracks that was around when Jesus was there. The real temple site is a few hundred yards to the to the west on a hill today called the Ophel, which in that day was called Mount Zion. That is where the future temple will be. That is where David will live after he comes back from the dead. Welcome back to Mount Zion, King David. We've had a hell of a time here while you were away, but now it's all yours again. Listen to this. This is how I think it's going to happen now. Is this a possible scenario? Israel Today, this is an article by the Israel Today staff. There's no one person writing this article. It's a staff article. Israel Today reported last week on the harassment of Messianic Jewish believers in the southern city of Arad, by local Orthodox Jews belonging to the fringe sect known as Ger Hasidim. While that incident mercifully ended without any injuries or damage to property, the Ger are known for easily resorting to violence. What do you know? What do you Jews easily resorting to violence? As they did during a confrontation with the secular Israeli residents of Arad on Saturday night, the long running long-running Gur campaign to take over Arad has included regular attacks on the town's mayor. His name is Nisan Ben Hemo. Over the weekend, one Arad man decided to hit back by hanging a large poster informing the Gur Grand Rabbi that the town is, quote, not for sale, unquote. Gur activists responded by hurling burning tires at the man and his wife. Well, that's what you do when you're upset. You set tires on fire and you hurl them, not only at your adversary, but at the beloved spouse of your adversary, which resulted in mobs gathering on both sides. Isn't that unique? The man told, is, the man told Israel's Yannet News Portal, quote, We put them out and they started coming in droves. We hung the sign because they're putting up signs against the mayor, so we paid them back in kind. Well, isn't that what Israel does? They pay them back in kind. Hmm. Yes, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth, and a hurling tire for a hurling tire. We'll take down ours when they take down theirs. Isn't this a nice little Jewish playground? The situation quickly descended into open violence after Gur activists started spitting on the secular residents and throwing stones. Well, yes, it is escalating from burning tires to stones. They've gone from hurling to throwing, getting serious. There were no reports of serious injuries, miraculous, but police did arrest four people for their roles in escalating the confrontation. All right, here's my thoughts on this, is that could it be that the Orthodox, hardcore, hardline Jews, who do not believe that Jesus Christ has come yet, well, let's put it this way, they don't believe that Jesus Christ who came in the first century, their Messiah, they don't believe that he is their Messiah. They're still waiting for their Messiah. They missed a giant memo there. Now, they are clashing here, according to this article, with the kinder, gentler uh, Jews, namely Messianic Jews, who have recognized Jesus Christ as their Messiah. So they're being persecuted. Now, we know that in the first century, there was a persecution that resulted in the the diaspora, that is, the, the dispersion. Many Jews uh, back in Jesus' day were being persecuted by their temple officials, by the mainstream religion, and they were scattered abroad. They went into Greece. They probably went into Asia Minor, which is Turkey. Uh, they def and that became known as the diaspora, the dispersion. Now, history repeats itself. God is in big fat, hairy, glorious, predictable ruts. What if, I think this is plausible, what if these Messianic Jews who have some indication they have a head start, right? They have a head start. They're reading not just the first five books of the Old Testament. They're reading the entire scriptures. They know Jesus is the Messiah. Uh, as when Jerusalem does build a temple, and as I've told you, it doesn't have to be a fancy temple. It doesn't have to be overlaid with gold. It doesn't have to have perfectly crafted, banged out cherubim. It can be a makeshift temple, and yet it will be called the temple. It will be recognized as a temple. 
it's going to become more confrontational. There are going to be more burning tires, even more. Uh, and more officials' wives will have the tires thrown at them. And so there will be more standoffs. And eventually there will be a dispersion, just like there was in the first century. Where will they be dispersed to? I contend to you, I suggest to you, I strongly declare to you that they will go to Turkey. And they will be the forerunners. They will be the pioneers of those ecclesias. And then when the Lost Ten Tribe people who are at the north, south, east, and west, when they get wind that there's a dispersion in Turkey, and when the lights come on for them on and after September 23rd, they will join their brethren. And th th nothing will be nearer and dearer, dearer to their hearts than, oh my gosh, there's a persecuted group of Israelites. They were pushed out of Jerusalem by the hard liners who are sacrificing animals but they're they're doing it not in accord with god and with scripture they're just as stubborn as their forebears they don't even recognize the messiah they're still stuffing prayers into a roman barracks the remnants thereof let's join them where are they well i hear rumors that they're they're they fled into parts of turkey and they're forming groups up there let's go join them and so they will take United Airlines and Delta Airlines and um, Israeli Airlines, whatever other airlines, Turkey Express, I I Istanbul Airlines, and they will go to Turkey. It's going to be a, an exodus from here. It will be a dispersion from there. And isn't this cool that this is the beginning of the two sticks coming together? Here you have it. You have the house remnants from the house of Judah and the house of Israel. As I told you, the house of Judah are the recognized Jews, those that today we would call Messianic Jews. Many of them can probably trace their genealogy to Abraham. These are the ones living in Israel. These are the ones, you know, going around speaking Yiddish or whatever they do, eating all the proper Jewish food and that. So they're going to establish these ecclesias in a Turkey. These are remnants of the house of Judah. The people coming from the West, from the United States, for instance, when they think, oh my God, we have to join our brothers or however whatever means they take to join them they will join them and these will be remnants of the house of israel and so in turkey in these seven ecclesias we will have the house of israel and the house of judah starting to be rejoined but again i remind you this will not be an instantaneous combustion thing where the new covenant has officially begun but the new covenant is starting ing starting it's like the incomplete verb form I am using here. It hasn't started. Well, yes, it will have started on September 23rd, but it will be starting. The birth pangs will be coming on these people. It will be still be a process, but it will be a continuously sped up a process. And again, the simplest illustration I can give you, I wish I had invented this, but I didn't, is a woman in labor. Okay, and I think that it has already started. I think signs are already among us. And I will continuously remind you that the signs are not for us. They're for Israel. We don't need any signs. We have Jesus Christ himself. We don't need the, the mediacy, the priesthood of angels, of messengers. We don't need to pray to messengers or to hope that God sends angels to protect us. We have the protection of Jesus Christ himself. He's the one personally coming for us at the snatching away. He's not sending a representative. He's not sending Gabriel. He's not sending Michael. As much as I'd like to meet those uh, celestial personages, I would rather meet Jesus Christ himself. And it's, he is not called the chief messenger and it is he himself, Jesus Christ who is coming down to get us. One more remark to close this week, a traumatic week with the storm and everything, is that I am so thankful that God took that storm's wrath away from Fort Lauderdale. We could have gotten slugged in the nose by this thing. And as I was experiencing 100 mile an hour wind gusts while standing, you know, flat against the wall of my front porch i was i couldn't imagine being hit by say 150 160 sometimes a 200 mile an hour winds it's just like would be like getting hit by a freight train 
And so I instantly realized the destructive power of wind. I'd never seen wind that strong before. It, it, it's a mess here, honestly. People are cleaning up, picking up. Some fences have fallen down, trees, obviously branches. It's it's a mess. It's, it's going to take people a while to clean up. I went out on A1A the, the next day, and there was a, the, part of the beach was in the street. The beach had blown across the road into the parking lot. People were shoveling sand. The buildings were intact, thank God. Only 100 mile an hour wind gusts, so no structural damage to buildings for the most part. But I couldn't imagine getting hit in the face with this thing. And so I realized the power of God, and I'm so thankful, so thankful that God directed this storm elsewhere. And otherwise, I wouldn't be making this show right now. And listen to this most of this area is still without power. And they're saying that most, there's a half mil, a quarter of a million people in Broward County, where I live, still without power. There's a narrow string of houses on my street, 17th Street, that have power. And we had power at 2 a.m. that day. There are still a quarter of a million people without it. So, like, we hate to tell people we have power because they're, they're angry. They're jealous. They're upset. What? You have power? It's, I consider it a miracle that we have power. And we had power hours after the storm. And they're not calling for power to be restored wholesale until September 22nd. I just read that from the FPL, Florida Power and Light website. It's not until September 22nd that they expect to have power restored to all of their customers, their patrons, the residents of Broward County. And so God has made sure that this house has power. I think one of the reasons, one of the reasons is to make sure this show keeps going and gets out. And so I am extremely thankful to God for delivering me, for delivering us, for delivering my fellow residents, my fellow citizens of Fort Lauderdale, and for making sure that this show continues to come to you. And by the grace of God, and by whatever strength he gives me, it will continue to come to you. And by the way, one more note here. This is the anniversary show. This is September uh, 15th, Friday, September 15th. I am thankful to God it's the third anniversary. This show started on September 15th, 2014. It is September 15th, 2017. Unbelievable. For three years, this show has been coming forth to you. We're almost finished. We're going to go through the Ecclesias in Turkey, and then we're going to tackle the last chapter of the unveiling of Jesus Christ. And I do believe that this series will be in the can in completion before these trying times of the tribulation begin. And I pray to God that he will use the record of this show to help the Jews in that day to survive the tribulation.